Hey guys, this is going out to the group of us that are going to be going to Mount Kilimanjaro with Sene in, uh, next year in the spring. Uh, so this is our packing video. There will be another video uh, that we'll do later which will include other details about the trip and anything I might have forgotten in this video. Um, so I'm going to do this first part. We're just going to come in a little bit later with the second part. But to get us started off, um, some of the things that we got here is a uh, duffel bag that we used uh, did sufficiently hold all of our stuff. This is a 90 liter Patagonia bag. They do have other sizes, uh, but this was very sufficient for what we needed. And uh, another little add on to that, we got these uh, from REI. These are ditty bags, stuff sacks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we got 5 liter, 10 liter, and 15 liter bags. These are great to kind of organize your clothing, uh, knowing by color code what you've got where. Uh, it just helps you save time when you're in the town after you've been hiking all day and you're really tired You just know exactly where to go um, So you definitely want to maybe carry an extra one too uh, for dirty clothes as you go um, Hiking boots um, We learned all about this stuff from REI and I got mine from REI my brand is Salomon and as we go through all this brands of things and I will post links uh, under this video to all the different either uh, stores that we shopped at for these products or links to the actual products if we got them on Amazon. Uh, but so hiking boots, if you're not, if you don't already have hiking boots, uh, they recommend, uh, experts recommend you get a half size bigger than what you would ordinarily wear um, because you're going to be using probably two uh, layers of socks for most of this. Uh, I'll get to the socks here in a second, specific kind of sock. Uh, but that gives you enough space to move around in and on the really cold hike days it gives you more space to again put a second even a third layer of sock on there. Our summit day last year I actually had three layers on and that was fine as far as the space so half size bigger. Uh, you want to take a light, light, uh, lightweight pair of tennis shoes, running shoes, walking shoes, etc. Uh, that you can carry with you on the mountains so that you're not always wearing your hiking boots and having to worry about those, putting those on and off. Uh, every time you go in and out of the tent, you want something that's a little easier to get on and off so that you're walking around the campsite, uh, but also lightweight, doesn't take up a ton of space. Um, going to go with Backpack Nets. This is actually Bridget's. Uh, I gave mine away to uh, one of the guys last year. He needed a new backpack badly. Uh, so I'll be getting a new one. Uh, hers is a Gregory 30 liter. Uh, it actually, I don't remember if it came with or she bought a separate rain uh, or waterproof uh, exterior covering for it. Um, the backpacks are not waterproof and there is a rainforest zone we go through so you definitely want to have a cover for it that will keep it dry. Um, so once something gets wet on the mountain, the higher up you get, the less likely it is to dry. Uh, speaking of which, um, everything I have on the bed here, there's nothing cotton whatsoever in it. Cotton will get wet and won't dry at all on the mountain and it just gets nasty. So they recommend not taking any cotton on the mountain at all. Uh, so the backpack I'm going to get is probably going to be a Gregory uh, 40 or 45 liter. Uh, at the very least, even if I don't get it from REI, I probably will. Um, have it fitted specifically for me at REI. They do great uh, work fitting the backpack I got last time. It was not actually purchased at REI. It was an Atmos, uh, Osprey Atmos, which worked really well too. It was just a little bigger than I need to carry, carry back the next time. Uh, but they will fit you for it at, it at REI and that's very important to have a backpack very customized to your body because you're going to be uh, carrying it for long distances. Uh, if you've never done this before, then you will probably be tired and you want to try and minimize the strain on your back. Uh, moving along, so these are water bladders that we carried on the mountain with us. I put out the two kinds that we've got. One's a two liter, one's a three liter. We purchased both of these at REI. These are Hydropack brand, um, just a brand at REI. Uh, so they uh, different sizes there. They do have the piece in the middle. I don't know if you can really see it inside the bladder. Um, that is a shaper. It's kind of like a Ziploc seal. Um, you, uh, it'll hold the shape of the bag better um, when you got water in it so it doesn't poof out quite as much. It's a little more contained. And you can undo it so that you can easily uh, turn the bag inside out um, to let it dry out, let it air out so it doesn't get too nasty. Uh, so we carry those with us. Um, ceramic water bottle, that's also important to carry um, for uh, the big reason on summit day. Um, uh, you want to make sure you have something that does not freeze. So at the top, where it's below freezing uh, year-round, never gets above freezing, uh, you want to make sure you have something that will keep water liquid so you can drink it. Um, to the right of that, I've got the 
insulated version of all the ladder stuff that we got. Uh, and it worked extremely well until we got to the top of the mountain and that was kind of one of the knocks on those things. Uh, this piece here, the tip of it did actually freeze even though it's zipped up just because I didn't carry my own pack and Bridget didn't carry her pack either. Our guides saw that we were struggling uh, on summit day um, halfway up the mountain so they took our packs and carried them themselves and they weren't tucked away inside of a jacket uh, where it would stay closer to your body and stay warm. So that would have solved the problem. And one of our goals this year is to actually make it to the top, carrying our own packs and not be struggling so badly. But uh, so we have the insulated tubing, the zipper container here, which keeps the, uh, the, mouth, um, the mouth drinking piece uh, fairly well uh, insulated. Um, and this is the little container that it came in. We actually bought these at a uh, place called Foot Sloggers over in Blowing Rock, North Carolina, out in the mountains. Uh, got this from online. It's a Deuter um, insulated bladder bag that holds up to a three liter. Uh, and mine did fit quite well in it. It's got a little hole for the, the tube to come out, so it's a good design. All right. Awesome. Moving on. Sleeping gear. Um, so lots of different places where you can buy uh, sleeping bags. We chose a place called Hike and Bike, H-Y-K-E, B-Y-K-E. Uh, it's a website. They sell tents and sleeping bags and that's it. Um, we got our sleeping bags there because they are a direct to consumer. There's no middleman, so it's a direct sales company. Um, so it was a much cheaper way to go. They do recommend getting a zero rated sleeping bag, zero Fahrenheit rated sleeping bag for the mountain. Uh, they used to tell people 15 degrees and people were complaining about being a little too cold. Um, and so people from the company recommend now getting a zero rated sleeping bag. That doesn't mean you're completely snug when it's zero degrees, it just means you'll survive. Um, it was never zero degrees outside, didn't get quite that cold, but Bridget and I were both uh, sufficiently warm in these bags. Um, the highest we got, it probably was low 40s in the tent that night, um, and so this did keep us quite warm. We also had these liners which we bought from REI. Um, it's just a, a liner that goes through the inside of the mummy bag here. We actually, um, backing up a second, did get a mummy bag. That was recommended to us. It's a little less room to move around. Um, so if a person has problems with claustrophobia, it might be a poor choice. Um, but we did find with mummy bags, um, it's just a shape that's more uh, conformed to your body. There's less air inside of it and it keeps you warmer. So this, uh, back to the liner um, from REI, uh, it's Sea to Summit brand. Uh, we got the 25 degree rated one, so in theory that adds 25 more degrees of um, lowering temperature where you can survive and be warm uh, and be, and be uh, comfortable. We used these probably not the first night uh, where it was in the 50s outside, but uh, uh, nights two through five last year when we were up there. Um, it was below freezing outside, and so we used these every night, uh, and it was, it was quite comfortable. Um, so, and it just packs nicely into the sleeping bag. Uh, coming over here, I got a pillow. This is an inflatable pillow, uh, just very quick, easy. I just uh, open up the hole and kind of blow into it about three times, and it's full. Very quick, it packs down very quickly as well. This is the little bag that it came with. Uh, so that's the size of it, fits easily into the bag, very compact. Everything here is very compact. Uh, and it fits into a mummy bag quite well. And this was actually the thickest one I could find. This is uh, Xped, E-X-P-E-D, uh, and that'll be linked below. Um, moving on along, I did get a pair of athletic shorts. I'll probably get another one. The main thing about these is they're very quick drying. Um, and so I bought these at Foot Sloggers up in the mountains. Uh, and the brand is Prana, P-R-A-N-A. Just very quick drying shorts. I wore those a couple of times on the mountain when it was uh, sunny and warm uh, when we got to some of our campsites. Uh, and then a pair of hiking pants that I got. These are just black diamond. I got these from the Frugal Backpacker up in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, we'll probably go back there for, uh, for some stuff and take a group up there at some point. And planning just because they have such discounted rates. A lot of the stuff we got, um, nice stuff. Patagonia was from there. Uh, so these are just quick dry, um, easy movable pants. Um, that's why I got them, because it can be, you can move in them uh, very well. All right, moving along. All right, so socks here. Um, a lot of what we got, uh, the material was merino wool. Uh, merino is a specific kind of sheep. If you're not familiar with it, I was not. I learned all about all this stuff last year as we were packing for it. Um, so they come in two different kinds, uh, well, the multiple thicknesses. I got very thin and I got very thick. And so each time I would go hiking on the mountain, I wore a pair of thin and a pair of thicks. The good thing about merino wool is you really don't get that hot in it. it, it 
regulate your temperature both ways. Not exactly sure of the science behind that, I just know it works. So um, if you get sweaty, it wicks the water away, and if you're not sweaty, it keeps the heat inside. Um, but yeah, and so on. on Summit Day, I wore, I believe I wore two thin layers and then a thick layer. Uh, as far as other gear that I wore on a day-to-day -day basis, I didn't get out a picture of my boxer briefs. No need. This is the box for it. But um, anyway, so um, I wore a specific new pair each day. Um, certain things I was fine re-wearing like socks. I wore, uh, re-wore my socks each uh, twice. Um, these I only wore one time and it would be gross otherwise. Uh, as far as the actual summit day, and we use some of the components of this throughout the mountain. But as far as the summit day, uh, there was a specific outfit that they recommended that we wear layers, specific layers, etc. Uh, so we wore a base layer, which was merino wool. Uh, so we have a, it's, it kind of looks like thermal underwear, uh, but it's a very different feel. Uh, it's nice and soft and it doesn't have the feeling of wool where you get itchy. It's actually very different. The other good thing about merino wool is it doesn't ever stink. The only way it ever smells is if you get it wet, it will smell like sheep's wool. So when you wash it in the laundry, the first time I washed it, I rewashed it thinking there was something wrong with it because it smelled like wool. It smelled uh, very distinctly animal-like. So I rewashed it, same smell, but it goes away when it dries. But there's no body odor to it, so that's why you can rewear merino wool. Uh, so thermal layer, top and bottom there for the base. Uh, and then the second layer was what they call, um, well this, this here specifically is called an R2. There's R1, R2, it's just different layers of thickness. Uh, it's kind of a fleecy type material. This is a Patagonia, of course. Um, yeah, and so whoever you go um, to shop for this, they can help you with a second layer. Uh, but the beauty of this is it's very warm. And so there were times on campsites at night I would wear uh, a regular workout shirt underneath and I would have this on top and I was plenty warm. Uh, so it actually is something I will use, you know, during cold weather seasons as well, not just on the mountain. Uh, moving on around, I'm going to come back to the gloves in a second. Um, so uh, the third layer uh, is a heavy coat. This is actually a ski jacket. I got a ski jacket rather than a non-ski jacket, so it's a little longer at the base, um, but it was very discounted. It was actually cheaper than the comparable otherwise. Uh, so I got this as a third layer. This is actually what I wear even now when it's cold outside but dry. So this is not a waterproof layer, but it is a windproof layer and it's very, very warm. It's very padded. Um, it is a bit on the bulky side, but it's extremely light and packs down fairly well. This is a black diamond specifically. Fourth layer is the waterproof layer. So we did not actually, on summit day, need the waterproof layer per se, but we needed the extra layer of warmth because we were freezing, we're both cold natured. Uh, so we needed this pretty badly. Uh, we were just completely bundled up. And it's funny, Bridget has a matching one, so we look like twins. Um, yeah, so this was actually the outer waterproof, windproof layer that we wore on the mountain. Uh, these pants that I've got here are water, resistant but not waterproof. I was told because we were going in the dry season it was very unlikely it was going to rain at the top or snow at the top uh, that I would need waterproof uh, bottom. Um, so I do have waterproof boots. Those are recommended very highly because we did go through rainforest and it was wet there. Um, but uh, as far as the pants on summer day I did not end up choosing to get waterproof. If you went on a different season where it was wet you could get waterproof because uh, those exist as well. And the brand here is Saliwa, S-A-L-E-W-A. -E Got these at the Frugal Backpacker, uh, and I'll link those as well. Um, so as far as hats, I just got kind of a basic standard order hat. This is a material that dries very quickly. Um, this is the North Face brand. Honestly, I don't remember what store I got this uh, from. North Face. North Face store. Okay, great. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, and then a buff, um, just something that you wear around your neck and you can pull it up over your face. Um, to into this season, everyone's wearing masks anyway, but this actually will help keep the dust out because one, it's very dusty and windy at the top, it's desert zone. Uh, and then two, it actually keeps, it blocks the wind a bit and keeps you a little warmer. Uh, as far as gloves go, so we actually chose to wear proper gloves. So we had two layers of gloves. This is a thin layer, uh, which I got. Uh, from REI, OR is the brand, I forgot what that stands for exactly, but got those from REI. Uh, and then I got, these are actual REI brand gloves, very thick, outer, waterproof, Gore-Tex, um, 
uh, gloves. These are the ones you have a snowball fight in. These are like the really thick, heavy duty gloves. So we were wearing those. Um, and so at the base of the summit day, uh, we had all these on. Uh, we tried getting out our hiking poles and using those and we were struggling with the poles. Uh, so we didn't actually keep using those until the descent. Uh, we put those away, but our hands actually got really cold in the gloves at one point. Um, the guide actually helped Bridget get her gloves off and helped to warm her hands up because her hands were going, they were beyond numb, they were, they were losing circulation. Uh, so, I mean, she's okay, of course, but um, these, were, these were okay, but probably not as good as mittens would be because mittens, your hands will actually stay a little warmer. And if you don't have to handle things, mittens are probably your best bet. So we're going to go with mittens the next time. We'll probably use these for the descent where we did actually use poles um, and uh, they would work better because um, you can grip and handle handle things better with your hands. Uh, poles, we're actually gonna go with Black Diamond. We don't have any poles out here right now because each of us gave away our sets of poles to our guides last year. They definitely needed some poles because they were uh, they were struggling, not as badly as we were on the descent from the summit, but it was very loose uh, dirt. And so you take a step down and you slide a little bit and as tired as we were, we were sliding and falling a lot. So the poles helped kind of reduce my falling a little bit. I still fell some, Bridget actually did a lot better than I did. Uh, but so we will be getting black diamond poles. We chose to go with carbon shafts uh, because neither one of us is really big and there wasn't a whole lot of risk of shattering those. That's kind of the, the knock on those is that they can shatter uh, if you put a lot of weight into them. So we did not end up having a problem. They actually worked great. Um, and so black diamond was the brand we use. That's what we'll get again. Um, one other thing I did want to mention in regards to the bottle um, so stainless steel is what we wanted to use as opposed to plastic ourselves because we already have the plastic um, bladders. We wanted to do something not plastic for that and also wouldn't freeze. Uh, another little thing about the bottles is I found out after the first night of sleeping in a tent, uh, going outside uh, in the middle of the night where at least it was not below freezing that first night, but it got really old really fast getting up and going to uh, relieve myself outside. Um, and having to put stuff on. So the second night I actually did um, get uh, one of the guides to get me a bottle. Um, so I found out later it was a poor guide's bottle, or poor uh, porter's bottle. Uh, I felt that for the, the guy, he was um, not poor, but I felt like you know poor guy because I took his bottle and I didn't realize that. But um, he was still sufficient. He had water for the mountain, but I didn't realize that he was losing his main bottle. So they got me that, so I was able to use that at night and not have to get outside the tent. So that was nice. I'm not sure what the female version of that is, um, but uh, I do know that uh, that worked really well for me as a guy. So I will be taking a separate bottle uh, to use in the tent at night. A couple of other things. Uh, as far as the sleeping bag, um, that was great. Um, Sleeping, you know, camping, of course, it, the ground is hard. And so we ended up renting from the company air pads, or sorry, uh, not air pads, but sleeping pads, sleeping mats, uh, which were apparently state of the art. They were one inch thick, but they still didn't do a whole lot to soften up the ground. So this go around, we're probably going to go get inflatable air mattresses, just really quick, easy, inflatable, uh, maybe one or two inch air mattresses, probably from REI, we'll look around a little bit and we'll get more back to you on those as we go. But um, anybody who has a hard time sleeping in a tent, camping, uh, you're probably gonna want to get an air mattress instead of a, use the sleeping pad. Um, another thing is uh, we don't have these now because we gave them away to our guys last year, uh, to the porters, to some, so I'm not sure who took them, but we gave them away, uh, headlamps. And so we needed those for summit day. That was the only time we were hiking in the dark. Uh, we did use those uh, for about six and a half hours on summit day. We started at midnight and then went up until about 7 a.m. when it was when it finally uh, got light. So we used those. Uh, we'll probably get Black Diamond brand uh, from REI or from Amazon, wherever it's cheapest this go around. Um, so other extra stuff that's not necessarily required for the trip, but will definitely be useful um, to a certain capacity. Um, these are mostly electronic appliances here. So I do have a watch that has an altimeter on it. It's a Garmin. There's a lot of different watch brands that do that. Uh, so I used that last year, not only to time our hikes, but also to uh, get the altitudes. Um, so this guy here is just a little tiny, it was a really cheap thermometer. It's just a digital thermometer. You turn it on, it's got the temperature on it. I use that because I'm a temperature geek, um, data geek. So I actually took the temperature like inside the tent, outside the tent, at the summit, etc. I just carried that with me. It's small, lightweight. 
um, and it was an easy thing to do. Uh, this guy is a solar charger. Uh, I ended up using that once, and they have solar chargers as well. They're, they're gonna carry up the mountain, so they'll have means of charging your electronic devices. Uh, I got this as a Christmas present, so I didn't actually spend money on it myself. Um, but it still did serve its purpose once. It's a high-speed charger. Uh, it's got to be indirect sunlight. Um, so on the mountain, there's a lot of direct sunlight, at least the time we went last year. And we're going to be going in a dry season again next year, so uh, there should be a lot of sunlight. Um, and so you can actually charge uh, batteries with it. You can charge uh, devices with it, etc. Uh, this here is a battery backup. Uh, it's the largest size that you can carry onto an airplane. Uh, it's just your standard uh, battery. Uh, this is an Anchor brand specifically, um, and it's fully charged at the moment. This is a high-speed one, so it's got the uh, USB uh, power delivery, uh, so it charges very quickly. This thing will actually charge in about three hours. Um, and again, you can carry it on an airplane. It will charge an iPhone 7 between seven and eight times completely. Uh, so we took it last year and used it uh, and worked out extremely well. Um, there, uh, flashlight. This actually was really useful inside the tent at night. You know, once it gets dark, there's no light. So uh, it had a little hanging clip on it. So inside the tent, we just hung it there and we had a little overhead light for whatever we ended up doing. Uh, until we actually went to sleep. So that was actually really useful. This specifically is a Phoenix uh, Phoenix UC35. Uh, it's a USB rechargeable and I got it specifically for the USB rechargeability because I didn't want to carry a bunch of little batteries up the mountain. Um, and I did not run out of battery charge with it and this has actually a pretty good range on it as well and I'll link it. Um, this here is actually the charging pack that comes with the anchor. Uh, that's what you plug into the wall to charge it quickly. And this is the, uh, there's a power converter on here, which all of our devices that we took last year uh, work just fine in Tanzania. Uh, they have a uh, 230 uh, volt system versus our 100 volt system here. But again, a lot of devices are ranging uh, now between 100 and 240. The iPhone chargers, for instance, do that. Uh, this battery pack does that as well. So I didn't actually need uh, the voltage converter. Um, I took it anyway just in case. Uh, so this specific, specific one I've had for a long time. I have no clue where I got it from at this point. But um, So you can plug your regular device into it. As far as the actual sockets that you need in Tanzania, um, this here is a uh, type G. So it's the three kind of slits, the three prongs. It's what's used in the UK. Uh, and I'm 99% sure this is what we used in Tanzania. If this isn't what we ended up using, then this is. Uh, this is a type D, uh, which uh, websites um, say that are used in some places in Tanzania as well. It's three circle prongs. Uh, and this is, we have this because this is what they use in South Africa where Bridget's from. So we take this every time we go there. Um, as a nice little, uh, nice little, um, yeah, plug adapter. So that is everything I've got for you guys for now. And again, we'll do another video uh, later if there's anything I forgot and with some other details I didn't include here about the trip. Hi ladies, I just wanted to cover some of the gear that I took on the mountain regarding clothing. I think Sandy did a really good job of just going over everything in general. One comment I will make um, is the pack that I used was it's a 30 liter, I believe 30 liters, and definitely don't need anything bigger than that because the porters really are carrying everything. You just need a day pack to carry your water and like your jacket, sunglasses, things like that. So um, as far as gear, let me get started on maybe like some hats and stuff. So I had the same um, blue hat that Sandy had from North Face, but he just wanted me to mention to also have a hat that will protect you from the sun. So that may be on, uh, on the hotter days or I think even um, on the way down, having a visor was really good because it was pouring rain um, when we came down into the rain rainforest towards the end. And so, um, so having a um, hat with a visor I think will be really good. And then I actually didn't take this, but I was wishing when I was on the mountain that I did bring this. So this is a, I think this is like 
a running balaclava that I have from Under Armour, but it's able to like cover the whole face. And I was so, so cold on summit day. Like I just felt like everything was frozen. And like I said, I didn't, I was very warm with everything, but my face wasn't covered. And so I think I'm gonna take this with me next year where it just a little slit for the eyes. And then, um, so I just took, these are honestly just my regular running gloves. These may be my favorite running gloves, but I use these under my, my bigger gloves um, for summit day. And then I, I just put this here to remind me, I um, wish I had taken a small cloth of some sort and um, I really like the Norwex cloths and um, I'm actually out of some of them now because I donated them to our clinic um, for COVID-19. But um, so this, this just reminded me that I wish I'd had a cloth, even, even just on my bag so when it was raining that I could have like wiped my face, like water off my face or sweat or also, um, you know, because you you don't bathe while you're on the mountain and we're going to be on the mountain for, I think, eight days. And so they do give you these warm buckets of water where you can like wash your hands and face um, with, I think, in, in the morning and in the evening. And just having a cloth to maybe like wet a cloth and maybe just like wipe yourself down in the tent or something, um, I think that will be really good. So I'm going to remember that. And then as far as gear, I really um, have a preference for Arcteric as well as Patagonia. I um, just try, I tried on a lot of different brands and so those are the ones that I landed with. So I have my, uh, my R2 is, is an Arcteric and so this is, it's like your fleece layer, although this, this is not fleece, fleece. I was going for things that would be really like light and fitted. I didn't want to be super bulky. Um, you know, Sandy had like pretty bulky stuff, but he's like a super skinny guy. So I didn't want to feel super bulky. So I went for really sleek fitted things. And, um, and so, and, and this, this Arcteric, um, by the way, I mean, these brands are pretty expensive. Like you pay a pretty dollar for them, but um, I just figured it was worth it because I mean, I get a lot of use just out of this by itself. Um, I got like the matching Arcteryx pants. These are not waterproof, but they're just pretty, um, pretty thin, pretty lightweight fitted, super comfortable for um, for hiking. But the key with these is you just want that like dry wick. You don't you don't want um, anything to be sweaty or anything like that. This next pair of pants are my my outer layer pants. These are water. I believe they're waterproof. Um, and so the yeah so these are outer layer and so they they're a bit bigger because like you wear them over two layers I think for summit day I wore them over my base layer then I had these on I believe and then these over them and um, but they're super comfortable once again I, I tried on lots of pants and I just really really favor these they're just very easy to walk and move in and um, once again, they, they don't hold on to moisture or anything. And then as far as my jackets, so this is my warm jacket. Once again, this is Arcteryx. Um, also, it's, it's pretty fitted, but it is um, super, super warm. Nice insulated hat over there. It's got down. And it's down. Yeah, I think both of our jackets are down. So you, um, I think you want to get down right for the insulation. And then this was my outer layer. So this is Patagonia. Sandy and I got matching ones. So these are, I guess, because like you use them for like for ski helmets and stuff, right? So they, um, the hoods are kind of big, but um, this is nice because it does have that visor part on it, but and you can tight like tighten it at the back. And so um, these were super nice. And then let's see, the only other things, so base layers, so you do need base layers. We got the, um, the brand that we got for, um, these were Icebreaker brand and these are um, Merino wool. I just used, um, I think Icebreaker has a brand of underwear as well and I didn't like it, I didn't like the feel of it. Um, they're just a little bit ugly, so I just, I just like, I don't want ugly underwear, and so um, I just took like a bunch of Patagonia, so I like, whatever, like six, six, seven pairs of Patagonia bras and underwear, and they worked great, um, so I was really happy with that, 
and then for socks I actually I got the exact same socks as Sandy I think he he bought these for me so a few pairs of those and then yeah so I think think that's everything and then basically like the other items I took um, just like running you know short sleeve shirts I um, regretted not taking enough uh, long sleeve shirts like so maybe I only had one or two and I wish that I had more long sleeve shirts um, but honestly just like dry wick you don't have anything cotton um, so just really um, like athletic shirts and then I did have uh, actually another pair of I think North Face hiking pants as well that were three quarters and um, pro you know probably you could use like um, running tights but I get concerned that they'll get sweaty and smelly so I didn't do any tights and I consider taking running shorts which probably could do on um, on the first day where it's kind of hot so anyway that's everything sunglasses oh and then I forgot about sunglasses so um, you do need sunglasses for summer day specifically because of the glare and everything up there so um, I just took my cycling sunglasses actually they fitted perfectly just because they're fitted around my face like that so um, that you don't need like when you see mountain climbers like on Everest and stuff you see them with like those goggles on or like ski goggles you don't need those I think just a regular pair of sports sunglasses